What's up, ladies and gentlemen? And welcome to HCS Pro Talk, your weekly Aloys Sports Podcast. This is episode 204 for the week of October 10th, 2021. Title for this episode is Settings on the Infinite Horizon. It's not a good title, okay? I get it. It's not it's not a good one, but bear with me. What's up, Dark Shogun? Welcome back to the live show. Martin Voodoo Man himself, welcome back as well. And uh, to everybody who's listening to this or watching the VOD, hello to you as well. Hope you're having a great, wherever the fucking day or night it is for you. Um, but it's Monday night for us here in the good old Minnesota where the temperatures are starting to decline. And I'm not too happy about it, but it's okay. At least it's not winter. Although Game of Thrones would have you know that winter is coming. You know what I want to say in response to that? Hmm. In Minnesota, winter's always coming. It's never a fucking rare occurrence. It's always coming. It's not a special phenomena, winter, that season. We get it all the time. So... Fuck you, Game of Thrones. <laughs> Have a better last season, goddammit. I don't know. I, I, I wasn't too pissed about it because I I didn't read too much into it. Sure. You know? Um. Hi, Will. Hi. My name is Josh, a.k.a. J.K. Fire. I forgot even to, even to do this. This week I'm joined by the man in the Halo Classic t-shirt. Not like Classic Halo. Can't <laughs> get it? Even though that tournament was based off of a classic I mean, Halo. It was. Shit. Mm. Well, a.k.a. I am Mr. Mayhem. Well, how are you doing on this Monday evening? Well, I'm taken aback by that crazy intro you had. <laughs> kind of like randomly barked in the front of the front of starting. I channeled my inner DMX. Yes, you did. Um, oh, oh. Yeah, I'm doing it's fine. It's not a fucking game. Fuck what you heard. Uh, it's what go. you're hearing. X go and give it to you. Great. How are you doing, Josh? You know, I'm all right. <laughs> we watched a couple Bond movies last night. Yeah, we did. Um, to give the folks at home a little uh, piece of information. So the newest Bond movie, No Time to Die, has released in theaters. Yeah. And uh, Will and I are going to go see it in a the theater. Yeah. Eventually. I'm going to wear my Bond Ultra Boost while I do it. Fuck it. God damn it. <laughs> Mine are getting delivered tomorrow. I'm excited. Are they? Yeah. Shit. I got a shipping note. Like, conf- Wait. Mine's on Thursday, I think. My original one said Thursday, and then I checked the, the other. There's a tracking number. Yeah. And it said tomorrow. Well, I hope mine are coming tomorrow, too. They Fuck might. you if they're not. They might. Okay. Let's, let's give the rundown here. Hopefully Natana's not listening to this episode. So uh, <laughs> even though, you know what? She said she goes back and listens to him now. So I might be fucked after this. Oh, but, no, um, it's not. Uh... So Will and I, <clears throat> we're, we're watching the Daniel Craig Bond movies in sequential order leading up to us going to the theater and seeing No Time to Die. Yeah. So we did a uh, double feature last night. We did uh, Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace. Quantum of Solace, not as bad as I thought it was going to be again. Um. Casino Royale, still classic. And uh, this coming Sunday, we're going to we're gonna watch um, Skyfall Inspector. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we also bought Ultra Boost. So that's, that's that. Um, You're on the TV, but I wasn't paying attention. All I heard was, hope Natana's not listening. I'm fucked. Oh, I yeah. am so we're fucked. We're good. We're good. Natana, just think about it this way. How many pairs of shoes do you have, right, compared to how many pairs of shoes I have? Cotton 4K? I mean, literally. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck. God damn it. You know, I'm sleeping in the doghouse tonight, boys. Mine are cheap? Yeah. Mine were on sale. Right? 30% off. Yeah, they're 30% off. That's a good deal. It was a great deal, actually. Uh, yeah. like, all things considered, they were a great deal. Limited edition? 
limited edition shoes, 30% yes. off. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Some of the most comfortable shoes out there right now. Uh, according to a lot of people. Yeah. Beth included. Beth, I'm not trying to throw you on the bus, okay? I promise. Um, do you want to know what's coming up on this week's episode, this episode of the show? Josh? HCS Raleigh updates, tournament announcements and recaps, a new Halo Infinite game mode, Will! Yeah. I saw the video. Yes. MCC Season 8 is coming real soon. Call of Duty roster announcements. We got we got caught another games watch back. And some video games as well to round shit out. Without further ado, Will, let's get into some competitive news. Additional infinite stats. This is by Halo Data Hive. And they state, made another update to the Halo Infinite Flight Stats page. You can now filter your service record stats by playlist. Uh, for example, all playlists, arena, BTB, or PVE, as in bots. And the reason why I included this in the show notes, exclamation point show notes in the chat like Voodoo Man did earlier on in the show, is because the stats are still live. I checked today. So if you're interested in how you performed in the Halo Infinite technical preview number two, check out your stats, halodatahive.com. Pen Halo tournament announcement. This is by Pen Halo on twitter.com. And uh, here's their graphic. It states... Pen Halo, Pen Halo, Autumn Assault, one thousand dollar prize pool. It's the final two v two before Infinite. Sunday, October seventeenth, at one p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a Halo Three two v two tournament, cross platform, cross platform, double elimination bracket, sixty four team capacity, North America only. Okay. The last one before Infinite releases. And then I bet they're going to do Infinite 2v2s. That's what I'd imagine. Like, yes. We're a month and a half away. Holy motherfucking a month holy, and three dude. weeks. Seven weeks. Gosh. It's crazy. It is. It's crazy. We're going to be playing. We're going to be playing Attrition in two months' time. That's a spoiler alert for later on in the show. <laughs> The greatest Halo montage of all time. This is by the greatest Halo montage of all time. It's literally their Twitter account. And they state the contestants for the greatest Halo montage of all time are now locked in and the brackets have been set. The link to see both is in the bio of that Twitter account. The first round will commence on Friday. It's already commenced. That was last Friday. Please retweet and share this content. In the meantime, the more voters, the better. Well, hey, we're sharing it to you. So uh, let me just say that if you, even if you don't vote, but you should vote, go to the spreadsheet that's in that bio. The amount of montages that are in there is fucking insane. Like, I'm thinking to myself, oh, this is going to be, like, the best, what, like, 50 montages, right? Something like that, ballpark estimate. Nothing too crazy. No, there's hundreds. Hundreds in there. Go check it out. It's pretty fucking cool. They're all YouTube links as well, so you can go watch them. Um, Get your votes in and see who wins. It's going to be a fun time. And uh, if you just want to relive some classic uh, montage moments, they're in there. And there are some phenomenal Halo montages out there. Um, some lesser known ones too, which are really cool. Halo Wars 2 gets the community love. This is by Nick Meister. He states, very unfortunate news for the Halo Wars 2 community. Fret not, I'll provide you stats through Halo Esports GG. I've delayed it for long, but at this point, you won't have an official place to look at stats, so I'll help out. Not me, Nick Meister will. Um, so for those who've been living under a rock, uh, AKA Patrick star, you would know that um, we haven't talked a lot about halo wars two on the show as of late, because there hasn't been a lot of tournaments happening, but there's also a problem with, you know, three, four, three supporting their video game. So it, it's not in a great state right now. And things are about to get worse because the reason why that tweet exists, um, it's in reference to an announcement that was made by 343 in, in their, with their new Halo Waypoint experience online. Um, they're removing 
I think they're removing Halo Wars 2 functionality from it. So, um, yeah. All I'm going to say to that is, that's not fucking cool. Next news story. For All Mankind, Halo Infinite launch event has been announced. This is by For All Mankind. They state Spartans. We're excited to finally share that we're hosting Columbus's premier Halo Infinite launch party on December 11th at Game Arena Columbus. Whether you're looking to compete, enjoy some trivia, or play in flash tournaments, we've got you covered. But hey, for all mankind, let me ask you a motherfucking question. Do you have Halo Kitty fucking... Uh, coloring pages? Coloring pages, thank you. That, that was Halo 3. <laughs> I struggled real hard right there. That was, that was difficult for me. Um... But do you got Halo Kitty coloring pages? Because if you don't, you're doing it fucking wrong. Ask Lanky Sasquatch. He knows. Bravo's back. He is. In the studio, that is. This is by Bravo. He states, back at the Halo HQ this week to record some juicy Halo Infinite videos. Juicy. Oh, man. I hope they're gushing with content. It's it's going to be the... I bet those videos are going to be pretty uh, moist. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I did with my eyes right there. That was weird. <laughs> if you want to leave after that, I, I don't blame you. I don't you. even know what to do anymore. I'm so confused. Um, Let's but no, continue the show. I think, I think the reason why... I mean, it only makes sense that it's for HCS content. Yes. Yeah. Um, so... Very much looking forward to it, obviously. Speaking of HCS content, HCS Raleigh is sold out. General admission and VIP tickets for the HCS kickoff major in Raleigh 2021 are officially sold out. Mark your calendars. Team passes go on sale November 17th. We'll see you there. You will. You'll see us there. We'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be a fun time. We got to figure out, like, things to do with the event. Like, fuck. (laughs) <laughs> main stage I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm saying like meetups and like places to be come find us here type things events for us <laughs> that's not <laughs> that that's not fucking <sighs> alright no I agree we do need to we do need to figure out something and if you are going to be there uh, hit us up in the DMs not in a sexual way Unless, I mean, your your mind's kidding. there already. So, <laughs> Jesus, um, yeah, hit us up. Let us know if you're going to be there. We'll uh, we'll figure some out. We're gonna storm main stage <laughs> and get kicked out promptly, guys. We're gonna do it during grand finals. Okay, who's with me? Please, no one. Who's with me? No one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Tasha, don't worry. We're not doing that. Unless. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, speaking of HCS Raleigh, there's an update. This is by Tashi. He states, just had a good meeting with eSports Engine about the HCS kickoff major venue. We've basically doubled the amount of seats and significantly increased the size of the main viewing screen to ensure a great experience on site. We'll be ready for you all. Fuck yeah. Sweet. Means I hopefully get to sit the fuck down. I like sitting. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. You know what I hope for, though? What's that? Hey, Tashi. Uh-oh. If you're, This isn't a I'm bad afraid. thing. God damn it. I mean. It's not. Is it not, a, not a Josh rant? No, it's not a Josh okay. rant. So it's just a legitimate question. Well, a legitimate, uh, a legitimate inquiry, if you will. To Tashi and Adam, to everybody that is uh, helping and setting this event up and getting the logistics taken care of and specifically about these seats. Um, might I ask, if they're not already, that they have cushions of some kind? And again, this isn't to be an asshole, but like I've been to I've been to events that have like the traditional ass. Just the steel yep, folding chair? Yeah. Did the COD event have cushion seats? I can't remember now. I think they did. They did. They did. And so did Worlds. World ha- Worlds had cushion seats as well. Hmm. So it might depend 
on the venue though. What, Absolutely. What the venue has. I don't think that's a HES thing. I think right. that's a so convention if the, center. If the venue, if the convention center doesn't have cushion seats, then I better see Tashi and Adam going to fucking Wally World and getting their asses <laughs> some cushions Just for my ass. Walking and placing <laughs> cushions. Hey, maybe there'll be a couch in the VIP area. My seat's the only one that's not going to have a cushion now. Yeah. Like, hey, Josh, it's good to see you. Where, where are you sitting at? I'm sitting over here. Oh, yoink. <laughs> Boom. Still oh. chair. All right. No, they'll give me like a fucking bar stool. Just a wooden bar stool. No, no cushion either. Just a wooden bar stool. That's it. Um, by the way, just checked. And you do have a package coming tomorrow. You're welcome. Yes. From Amazon. And it's an HDMI hub. Not my shoes. Not the shoes. Nah, not the shoes. The shoes came from somewhere else. They came FedEx, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, FedEx. So, yeah. HDMI hub is coming uh, coming tomorrow. Got to hook up the old shit out there, the old consoles. Make sure. it easier to switch inputs, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. We're Will. S- we're so off the rails. It's okay. Will. Yeah. Infinite competitive settings. Do we have them yet? No. Fuck. Well, we have an update. (laughs) This is by Tashi. He states, filming the ranked competitive world premiere video today. This is not actually today. Look for a full blog interviewing the sandbox, multiplayer, and competitive insights teams, as well as a full gameplay start to finish, dropping late this week. I'm I'm thinking Thursday, Friday. Yeah. The fact that he said late, it's got to be that. Yeah. No, or, or knowing our luck, we will end this show. And then it'll just and do it will it. drop. Right. <laughs> Natasha, you said it was late. No. No, it'll, I'm, I'm assuming Thursday, Friday here. Same. Same. Um, So we're expecting AR starts. Um. They reintroduce ground pound into the game. No. And they increase the damage of the AR. And they made it more accurate at long range. They have to make it viable for every circuit, for every situation. You know, it is a rifle. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's going to be sidekick primary. Um, <laughs> That's what I, it seems like that's what the pros want, doesn't it? I don't know, man. I went on my rant last time. I yeah. don't need to. I don't need to go deeper into that. Natana says there's an Adidas package coming tomorrow. Up top. There you go. We got him, baby. Shoes tomorrow. Shoes. Uh. Oh my God. Shoes. Wow. That's I hope someone. Fucking old I hope hell. someone got that. That dated us right there. I well, hope so, not, someone got that reference. But maybe it didn't date us because uh, they came out with another one. Like what, last year or two years ago? Oh, okay, okay, never mind. I know what's going on. Now nah, we're fucking old. <laughs> um, so I know that some of them have talked about... I can't call anybody out, and I don't want to call any, any, anybody out because I'm not remembering who said this, but I know that there was a discussion around, well, what if we just, what if we just buffed the sidekick to make it more in line with a primary weapon. Again, I don't recall who exactly was talking about this. I just remember it happening. But then what people need to realize is it's that that's not the archetype of the gun. That's not the point of the gun. Yeah. It doesn't, that's not the, that's not how it fits within the sandbox. It is a sidekick. It is a side weapon. It is a sidearm. It is a, oh, I need one or one or two extra shots. Boom, boom, done. Yeah. Um, Something to make it so you are still viable in a fight, but you're not, but you are at a slight disadvantage because it is a sidearm, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I do remember that conversation happening at some point in time. Nobody wants autos. That's like a given. No pro wants autos. Um, rightfully so. Like it's not, it's never been, I mean, Halo 5 launch notwithstanding, but like it's never been a thing. Um. So yeah. From from the outside looking in, it really, really feels like it's gonna be BR starts. I yeah. just I don't see it being the commando. Um, especially with how iconic the BR is and that they took the design from Halo 2. It's like that it's like what everybody wants. 
Now, what I am seeing, Will, though, is a counterpoint to the VR, is it feels too easy to shoot. And that's what some pros are worried about. I think Frosty talked about it. Um, again, this isn't to name drop or anybody. I, I just think that I believe he, he talked about this, where uh, the BR just feels too easy to use in the game, which could create less of a... I'm not using his words here, but so maybe it creates less, less of a skill gap. I don't know. I think... I don't know. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just going to put it this way. Sure. There could be, sure, less of a skill gap, but... Pros are still the pros. They're 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 god tier for a reason. Mm-hmm. It, this should mean that while yes, your gun skill matters, so does your positioning, communication, teamwork. Right. And we don't know how radar is going to be working in this or anything like that either. So, yeah, um, for, they we already have confirmed that uh, um, Quinn came out. Quinn De Hoyle came out and said that I just like the last name a lot. Uh, he said that grenade hit markers are not going to be in competitive. Yeah. So that is a given. Which was a huge conflict in Halo 5 because it gave away that positioning of, well, now I know right, somebody's right. there. Well, you know? let me let me say this then. What uh-huh. was the easiest gun to use in Halo 3 besides an AR? Oh, it had to be the VR, didn't it? And it was can a competitive I, weapon. Can I, give a, can I give a counterpoint to that counterpoint? Sure. What other weapon would be viable in Halo 3? The pistol's ass. Well, let's be real. Yeah. So what, what other, other gun would it be? I'm genuinely curious. Right. Well, that, well, with yeah, Halo. dual wielding and stuff. With Halo Infinite. Yeah. The, I mean, you could make an argument that the commando. That'd be the only other thought I could have. But that, I just that don't we know of. Yeah. Because we haven't, I mean, we haven't seen the full sandbox. We really haven't. Right. True statement. There, there, were those, there were those weapons that randomly showed up in the flight if you happened to get a match made game that way. Yeah. But. We didn't get to play with any of them, so. Um, but none of them were a burst fire or a rifle esque weapon like. I, I mean, the, 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 the commando does intrigue me a little bit because with the recoil management and whatnot, create skill gap, right? Um, knowing how to shoot that gun, you can single shot, you know, tap it, or you can full auto it if you need to up close. Right. It does have dual purpose. Right, and as much as people hate Bloom, myself included. Uh, talked about it ad nauseum last week. It's that, and I hate that I'm saying this, but it is true. That also introduced an increased skill gap too, because if you don't, if you don't pace your shots properly, if you don't like, because pros and players who play a decent amount are going to be able to figure out that timing immediately. Mm-hmm. And once they have that timing locked down, it's just rhythm at that point, you know? Um. And so, yeah, I, I can see, the commando, because we talked about it last week too. If you remove bloom, the commando is a laser beam. Yeah. And like that just completely breaks that gun in the sandbox. Is that the only gun that it breaks though? Sidekick has bloom. Well, yeah, but I'm saying like, I think the BR might, the AR does because the longer you hold it down, the further the reticle expands. Maybe the BR doesn't because it's a burst weapon. Maybe that's why it can appear as too easy to use. Yep. Hmm. Because we know for a fact the AR the AR does. We know for a fact the sidekick does, and we know for a fact the commando does. The sniper does too if you fire too quickly. Okay. Okay. True. Witness that. True. And we already know that the sniper is more difficult to use in fi- in uh, infinite than it is in five. Yeah. So that's just a given too. Um, which is a good thing in my mind. That increases the skill gap. Um, removing grenade hit markers increases that skill gap, increases that uh, need for communication, for teamwork, for positioning. Yeah. So uh, is, I guess my the point I'm trying to make is sure. having the BR such a bad thing. No. Does, does the B does has starting with the BR make the rest of the weapon pickups on vi- not viable? No. I mean, if you think about it, what, what has it always been, right? It's the competitive settings have always been uh, like a BR or DMR start for counting reach. And then power weapons. And then power weapons and right. power ups. And That's may, yeah. been it. Maybe like the, you know, the plasma pistols on the map. If right. there's an overshield. Take shields off. Yep. But that's really been it. Your base weapon, 
you you scavenge for ammo based off of dead uh, teammates or enemies, and you get power ups and power weapons. That's it. You and then like you said, you may have a couple straggler like plasma pistols sitting around. Whatever it may be. Do do so for competitive then. Mm-hmm. Are they still going to have like the commando spawn on the wall? That's a solid question. Like or the BR? Like would that just spawn on the wall for extra ammo? That's a solid question. It's a really good question because they talked a lot about the weapon rack system mm-hmm. and being able to see when, or like, a, uh, take into consideration, not necessarily no, but take into consideration when a new weapon is going to spawn on that rack to pick up for ammo or whatever well, did, it may be. Did you ever notice there's a bar above the weapon rack that fills? That's funny because I did not know that, but for everything on the ground, yep. there's a circle that fills. Yep. And so that uh, that makes total sense that there's something on the weapon and rack I just never well, paid attention also, to. Also, if so the bar fills with blue. And if it fills up and the weapon rack turns red, it means the other weapon that was picked up is still in play. It needs to be dropped or That's run really out of cool. ammo. That's really cool. So if you see a weapon rack then it's like you walk up to it and you're like it's red, it should be here. Yeah, yeah someone still have, some someone still has that gun. That's really fucking cool. I didn't so, know that. Um but yeah, I'm curious I mean, we just, we're close. We're, we are very close. End of the well, week. You just want to know. Part of me was like, should we just delay this episode until we get the settings? Yeah, but then we'd be like a week late at that point. I'm yeah. like, oh, fuck it. Who cares? Um, We'll just have a lot to talk about next week in terms of the actual settings. So, yeah, all we can do is speculate right now when we're going to have the official information later this week. All I can, I'll, what I'll say is, um, I truly believe it'll be a BBR starts. Um, I do as well. Yeah. The commando would be interesting, but I think it would be not, I don't think people would be happy with it. Sure. I just don't. Do you, here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. Do as a, as default competitive settings, do you get starter equipment Mm -hmm. or, or do you have to scavenge that? So right now I feel like there is a lot of equipment on the maps. Yes. I feel like but no, it, no starting equipment. Okay. And lessen the amount of equipment. Like make people really fight over it. Okay. So from my playing, it felt like there were maybe two different pieces of equipment per map. Yeah. At any given time. Um, but yes, they were strewn about pretty frequently it felt like. Yeah, like you could always find a grapple hook or a repulsor, it felt like. Right, it especially feel, in spawn. It didn't feel like it was rare to find equipment. Okay. But then it, maybe I, for 4v4 competitive, mm-hmm. I think equipment should be off. Ooh. No no bubble shield, no grapple hook, no, no so repulsor. The reason I asked is because we did see thrust in that green skull video. We did. So I, the reason why I asked you is because I'm like, well, that would be like the perfect transition point of people coming from Halo 5 oh, have, into Infinite. Have Thrust to start. Have Thrust as default. Ooh. I don't want it to be that. I would like you to either, I don't know if I want it off completely, but I would like you to have to be a contested point on a map. Yeah. I was thinking when when they said, you know, they did say grapple hook will be a pickup on the map, right? Yes. I didn't expect it to be like so frequent and like three uses seems like a lot for competitive, right? Maybe. I don't know. It very well could be. I don't know. We haven't seen it yet. We're getting gameplay later this week. Yeah. We're getting fucking. Oh my God. For, yeah. We're just competitive I guess gameplay later for me, this week. for me personally, I. I do enjoy the the equipment. Sure. But I don't want it to, like, I feel like no one's going to use the bubble shield often. The drop shield is not the drop the shield. Play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the repulsor is cool, but in a competitive setting where there's no vehicles. The, well. There shouldn't be vehicles. Let's just say I agree. There shouldn't be vehicles. But we don't know. Um, we have no idea. 4v4 mm. is only on behemoth. Yeah, great. <laughs> Competitive, um, I mean. So the repulsor, like, yeah, you can fling grenades back or whatever. Or Yeah. 
Um, you can do that. Push people off maps. Or if uh, they're like grapple shotting you, I think you can repulse them. I just don't know if it's something like, I don't know. I don't know either. You it, can use it to get to, to height places too, though. People have done that. I've seen that. I yep. did that too. Yep. You look, did look at the ground and hit the button. Exactly. Or you can like launch yourself off of like a wall or yeah. something. There, there could be some uh, really cool plays that are happening with Repulsor. Like getting getting top mid somewhere with it. Right. Being able to transition. and we Like on a recharge. And we also know that from the gameplay that we saw with Thrust, it's not as quote-unquote powerful as it is in 5, yeah. where it doesn't give you a shit ton of momentum. It gets you out of the way, but it doesn't keep you going. Correct. You kind of stop for a second once the Thrust is out. Yep. My question is... Because I just thought about this too. Are they going to make it so, um, because it sounds like a lot of these things are going to be customizable, right? Yeah. A lot of these things. So I'm wondering, are they, is there a toggle? And would this be implemented where your shields don't recharge if you sprint? Because right now they do. Yeah. And friendly fires leading into our next story. Yeah, I'll here. talk about, just bring it up real quick. So uh, the white wizard on Reddit, put out um, a screenshot of an infinite tooltip um, in the flight where it says et tu brute, which is a classic line from the Bungie titles. And uh, it states, beware of accidental friendly fire when playing competitive modes. Mm -hmm. So for those who don't know, uh, friendly fire is uh, disabled in social as of the flight uh, in both BTB and just social matchmaking 4v4 within the flight. And so the question always was, now, for what it's worth, okay, I just want to put an asterisk on all of this because this tooltip was in the flight. I find it weird that it would only be in the flight. So I would imagine this is how the actual game's going to be because we didn't see competitive in the flight. Yeah. Okay, but anything's subject to change. I just need to put that asterisk on here. We can't say something is fact if we don't know it's fact. Um, but there was a lot of discussion around is this only going to be in the flight or is this going to be something that's in the full release? Right. And then how is competitive going to be in all this? Like friendly fire has never been off yeah, in a halo title. Right. So, um, then I saw a comment that really resonated with me and made it make sense. If they kept it like this, where friendly fire is off in social on in competitive and ranked. Okay. The multiplayer is free to play. Yeah. From a social casual perspective, I just want to get in, have some fun, shoot some people and not have to worry about betrayals yeah. or anything like that. You won't, another thing to look at too is in social, you often did see a lot of purposeful betrayals and it ruined people's playing experience. Oh, like purposely betraying for snipe. Yep, things like that. I can't do that shit. Exactly. And so social. for for a from a social fun, not sweaty. I mean, people are gonna play sweaty if they want to. It's but Halo. It's, it's it's a first person shooter. Yeah, but from a, a social standpoint, they've done a really good job on just creating a fun experience. So when you when you look at competitive, and it is the you know. A lot of games, a lot of FPSs, friendly fire. I don't know. Yeah, I, it's, I feel like it needs to be there. You it's see, just like so in, weird. In, in COD, they you know, people spray down their own teammates on accident. Yep, it's only in their competitive mode. Yep, it is only in their competitive mode. It's only in hardcore. So, I didn't even think. Fuck, I didn't fucking think about that. Mm -hmm. They can't kill your teammates in COD because think about if you could in in social game modes, you die so quickly in COD. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I didn't fucking think about that. So I, I do think this is the smart route to go to com to have a fun competitive, fun, uh, <laughs> competitive playlist and a social playlist. Yeah, because like the, what that's that's what people want is the hardcore competitive is it's always been friendly fire is on. It's com it's catering to both uh, audiences. It's catering yes. to both uh, types of play styles, which yeah. is awesome. Something that was said that could never be done, yet here we are. Um, the only question is. Well, weapon starts right now. Right. Justin brought up a good point um, in Discord. And he said uh, it, it's going to take a little bit of 
brain adaptation going from the two modes because like when you go when you're going from social to competitive you can't just be Nate happy all of a sudden and just yeah. expect like oh nobody's going to fucking die and your whole team's dead you're like ah shit you know so i feel like coming from halo 5 where friendly fire was always on it's just in my subconscious now like i never spam nated teammates right you, you're just smart you about fight. it because yeah i mean yeah. it's it's so ingrained that you don't, I don't think about it. Very nice. I'm excited. Later this week, we'll finally have info. Solidified, concrete, subject to change info. Yep. We will probably watch the video over and over again. Oh, I can't fucking wait. We're going to talk about it so much next week. It's going to be a good time. Uh, Will, that's it for the competitive news. It's time for your upcoming turns of the week presented by Noob Combo. Com. Check out noobcombo.com for all your Halo Wii sports needs. But no merch. On Saturday, October 16th, we have the Royal Blood Halo 5 2v2. And then on Sunday, October 17th, we have the Esports Arena Halo 5 4v4 and the Team Revive Halo 5 2v2. Two Halo 5 2v2s. Yeah. So, if you want to watch some Halo 5 action, there's plenty of it going on next hey, week. Hey, that dub shit. And then uh, if you want to sign up for the Pen Halo Halo 3 2v2, their last one that they're going to be doing, check out that info earlier on in the show. Yeah. Well, that's it for the upcoming turns of the week presented by NoobCom.com. Check out NoobCom.com. No merch. What's up next, Will? Roster Mania. Yeah, Roster Mania. It's happening. We oh, got some, yeah, baby. Some, some things going on here. What's going on, Will? It's Formal coming back. What? This is by, by CDL Intel and Formal. Oh, my God. So over on Twitter, uh, this is from the, is it the Call of Duty Intel account? Yeah, CDL Intel, yep. Yep, so it says, Formal says he's had a Halo offer from another org, but he wants to be able to stay under Optic at the same time. So, is he coming back? Do you think he would come back? If the opportunity was right, I think he would. Well, his whole thing about not wanting to compete, not wanting to compete was that he was over the, the, the rigor, the, you know, rigorous schedules and all that. Maybe he really does fucking hate scump. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not trying to start. He wanted to kidding. focus on content creation. He right? Did. Yep. So I don't know. I don't think he comes back. I personally don't. I can definitely agree with you on that. Um, Although it would be awesome if he did, because for those who don't remember, uh, Formal competed a long time ago, and he was one of the best uh, at the time, um, especially during Reach. And, um, yeah, it was he came out with a it was there was a lethal and formal montage that came out that's more than likely in that list that we talked about earlier on in the show. Go watch yeah. it; it's really good. Um, but man, it'd be. Holy shit! It would be just something. We're having we're having Gears of War pros come over, you know, like bring the Call of Duty pro instead of Halo players going to Call of Duty. Let's get that back over here. Halo's coming back. I don't know yeah. to the extent, but you know, it, I mean, bring it would them be, all back. It would be cool if he came in for like if he wasn't coming back as a pro, just to see him in some form of like we're bringing all these ex pros back for a, a fun tournament type thing just to have them there once. I mean, we still don't know how, if there's going to be any point structure or anything to Raleigh. So, yeah. well, there's gotta be there. I mean, if you're getting points for, um, kind of what, what Tashi had said, grassroots tournament is going to have points, right? You're going to have to, they're going to have to assign points for official events then to keep, because like you can't have, if there's a f official event and you don't get points, but these a amateurs are getting points. Like, how do you then rank or stack? You can't. You have to have points throughout, in my, in my opinion. Well, the question is, because this event is so close to the release of the game and teams didn't have a lot of time to practice, mm -hmm. that's the question of, is this just going to be like, hey, this is the first one. We're testing shit out. Get people signed up. Come on down. Let's have a fucking good time and let's just celebrate this game's release together. Uh, I think you got to give out. I think you got to give out HCS points. This is the start of Infinite. You got to, you got to start it off right. Give the people the points for competing, because then like we'll have to wait and see. Teams who might have done well in Raleigh and yeah. just don't get points, and then the next tournament comes on. Maybe they can't make the next tournament. Then you get points for the first one they played in. 
You know what I mean? Like, I mean, come on, come on. But if they can't make it to the second one, then are they even professionals at that point? You never know what <laughs> happens. You, you know? I'm no, just... I get things come up. I understand. It, the, the reason, the, the point I'm getting at is what if formal, instead of like coming back and competing in an actual professional sense, he wants to sign up with a few of his buddies oh, for sure. Raleigh, come just... in and just see what happens. Yeah. And then they win the event and he's like, I'm back. Formal, ninja. Uh, who else is moved over? Shotzi. You know, he's too embedded in COD still. I mean, he won that Money 2's race. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> you um, know what I'm saying? Like, just, get, just get this, like, ragtag, like, old school team that just comes in and dominates. Oh, fuck. Formal, Ninja. I'm putting Ninja on the board with Formal. That's fine. I think he's still got some s- skills. Can we... Can I say... Lethal gets dropped from Sentinels. Oh, okay. And <laughs> that's happening. Sure. And that's lethal happening. teams back up with formal. No. Fuck. No, that's not happening. Uh, definitely not happening. We got the, then the ogre twins just randomly show up. <laughs> no. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> ogre one, ogre two. Fuck, lethal, you can stay on Sentinels. You're good. Ogre twins, come on back. All right, it's time. <laughs> so we have formal ninja, ogre one and ogre two. I mean, and, ogre 11th and ogre two. And they just sweep the tournament. Never lose a map. <laughs> They'd be the... Oh, my God. They'd be final boss reincarnated. It'd be hilarious, but it's not going to happen. They'd be the final boss at that point. Yes. Back uh, to roster mania. We yes. got more here. Yes. Uh, Fire and Ice is going to consist of Noble, Magico, Pulgot, and Bullet. Uh, team Hoodies Up. It's Helova, yep. Batman, Legend, and Rephoric. Nice. Kolek's team is going to be uh, Kolek, Floppy, or f- is it Floppy? We do this every single time. It's Floppy. Time. It's Floppy now. Okay. I uh, agree. I think it is. Dramus and Domi. Or Domi, if it's like dome shots, you know? It's your interpretation. It's whatever you think it is. Yeah. I'm going to go with Domi. Makes it, sense. There you go. Domi it is. I kind of like Domi, though, if his name's Dominic or Dom. Domi Domi. Domi. <laughs> D- Domi Domi Floppy. <laughs> All right, that's uh, that's that's it for roster mania. Uh, moving on to the tournament league recaps, we do have Pen Halos gamers forgiving Halo Three four before draft tournament, and here's the results. In fourth place, was known as Phenom Assassin thirty forty. Uh, Dirty Platano and Shreds. Shreds. Third place, taking home one hundred fifty bucks was. But Jesus, uh, C P R I D S. Uh, no idea. Rob chokes, much like I choked on that last name. It's okay. And then uh, the f- frenetic. Yes. Ding, ding, ding. Got that one. Second, taking home two hundred fifty bucks. Hunter JJX, Decliner, Fear A B, and Killer Cal. And first. Taking home six hundred dollarinos. Bid teaches J four H or Ja maybe uh, Pro Clutch and U E U E W E W Rentaria. I'm gonna go with that. That works for me. Uh, yeah. Next up, drip drip doubles and plazas. Halo Five SWAT FFA results. In sixth place went to the Lundy. Sixth place. Sixth place was the Lundy. Fifth, uh, loving the lag. Fourth went to Smoke You Dig. Third, Naf Burger. Second, Fourteenth Dalai Lama. Jesus. And first went to NSG Serial. Very nice. Next up, Esports Arenas Halo Five four before results. In fourth place, we had Team Solid. It was Resort, Sepsters, Zach, or Zarek, and the Luffy. I think. Yeah. Luffy, yeah. Luffy. Did, pla- did we just say that? Yeah, I don't know. Third oh, no, place. Third place went to Halo Five, twenty twenty one, taking home hundred dollars. Legend, Mista, Kimbo, and Scariotic. Second went to Fire and Ice, Magico, Bullet, Noble, and Poolgot, taking home three hundred bucks. And in first place, taking home six hundred dollars. Console Gamers, Penguin, Renegade, Trippy, and Stellar. Well, I wonder why they won. And pros in the H five. 
That's a stacked fucking team. Jesus. Next up, blue team tournaments. Road to Infinite Halo 5 FFA. Qualifier number two. Sixth place went to Military Spade. Fifth went to Bunny Waddles. Fourth went to Jaws. Third, uh, Wavenue. <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to go the... the Wavenue. Wavenue, yeah. <laughs> he qualified for champs. Second went to Loco NC. $50 and qualified for champs. First went to the coffee. Gets you going in the morning. Thy coffee. Bucks. Oh, thy coffee. Yes. 150 bucks and qualifies for champs. Nice. Wow. Wow, man. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Chris. <laughs> oh, my God. Cruzada, Halo. Wait. Cruzada, Halo, and Halo. Comunidad, España, and Halo. Oh, I can. It's Halo 4 2v2 tournament. Three Halo communities coming together for some Halo 4 2v2 goodness. Yes. Will can't pronounce shit. It's in fourth okay. place uh, was Wicked in Xterra? X- I'm surprised you even tried to pronounce that. Xterra? Xter? It's literally just fucking letters and numbers mushed together and be like, here you go. XT3R1. Third went to I'm Fizzy in EU Haven. Second went to. VST training and VH3 uh, Trapu. First went to Outcast and Hi, I'm Ninja. All right. I promise I didn't exclude an A on there. That's how it was spelled. So I even said, Hi, I'm Ninja. Yeah. 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 It was just, Hi, I'm Ninja. So All right. That's, that's what I got. Ninja. Thank you, Will, for running through those. Shall we move on to our topic of the week? Yeah. More Halo Infinite quirky shit. So there are just a few things that I want to touch on here. Now, I don't like to talk about leaks on the show because we don't necessarily know if they're true. The reason why I have two here is because this is legitimate gameplay and not just like shit in a Reddit post or a 4chan post yeah. being like, here's what the game is. You know, this is legitimate gameplay. So let's talk about it. First and foremost, this was in BTB. Um, catching thrown fusion coils. You can do this, apparently. So there's a clip by uh, Zen MN2 on Reddit. And uh, they state, someone caught my fusion coil. I think they were as surprised and confused as I was. So from the clip, it looks like the person that uh, Zen threw the fusion coil to was about to either reload, excuse me, reload or in the process of reloading their weapon. And it looks like they were just holding down the button to reload because they just scooped it right up when it was thrown at them. Yeah. So, yeah. I wonder if that was intended or if that's a bug. I, that's the question, right? We're going to have to test that when the game releases because that was weird. Because, cool, but because weird. Because essentially, like, if you throw a plasma nade, right? Yeah. And it, like, displaces things, you could probably, like, you can catch things out of the air. You can catch yeah. whatever. You can catch weapons. Yep. So, I would assume, yeah, he was reloading, holding that X button, and he probably caught just the game thought, you know, something's in the air. You right. catch it. It's just fucking weird. It, yeah. it, it was cool, but just weird. Okay, and then... Now play dodgeball with fusion coils. That sounds awesome. Custom, There's a mini custom, game right custom there. Custom games. Let's there go. Um, okay. The second part is uh, oddball gameplay. This is by Halo Infinite Leaks on Twitter. Um, and this was some gameplay of an oddball match that was taking place. And it it looks like traditional oddball to the point where you cannot throw it. So, um Halo 5, right? You could do it in Halo 5. I'm pretty damn sure you could throw it, right? No. No? You could, no. Halo 4, you could throw it. Halo 4. I know that for a fact. So Halo 4, you could throw the oddball. Uh, Halo Infinite, the oddball looks fucking awesome, um, but it looks like you cannot throw it. You can juggle it, so you can juggle it like you hit a flag. Obviously, mm-hmm. it makes sense. Um, but yeah, it just looks like some traditional oddball gameplay, and uh, not not a whole lot to talk about there. But there was something to talk about. Um, Now, this was a supposed new game mode called Attrition. Same Twitter account, Halo Infinite Leaks. Um, 
And the gameplay shows off the following. Round-based is what it seems like. Teams have a lives pool. Mm -hmm. Revives are allowed, so you can revive your teammate. And what happens is when a teammate dies, they have, they're an orb on the ground. Think of like uh, Destiny, where you, when you die, your ghost is this, is uh, on like an expanded orb, yep. and you can revive your teammate. It's the same deal. Your AI is in that orb as well. Um, just hold down the button to revive. And then at the very end of the gameplay, we see what looks to be like a circle of death a la a battle royale game yeah, that is encompassing the map as the match continues. So where it starts on the outer edges, works its way in, and it looks like it's going to push you towards an area of the map. couple points to note. We don't know how this was played. We imagine it was a custom game dealio within the flight where if, in case you didn't know, people were able to, like, I would say glitch themselves into custom games. Yeah. Um, so that is what we imagine this was. Um, we do not know any customized settings that were in this gameplay. If there were any, or if this was the base mode. Okay. We don't know if this is an actual mode that is within the game, which is just going based off the gameplay clip that was shown. You can find it in the Google Doc of the show. It's the show. And we also don't know based off of that red, like I'm calling it the circle of death. We don't know if that goes just to the middle of the map. We don't know if that moves, you know, like a BR traditionally would Mm -hmm. where it gets small enough to where once it's super small, it will now move to a different location on the map. We don't know if it closes on different points entirely. We do not know. I would imagine with how small the maps are, we just go to the middle, but sure. Do not do not know. Um, but yeah, Will, we talked about it a long time ago, how you thought it would be a really cool, excuse me, a really cool idea if Halo adopted a lives-based game mode, a la a search and destroy from a Call of Duty, um, or that type of scenario. This obviously is not that, mm-hmm. um, but what were your thoughts after watching that clip? So, t- I mean, watching it, to me, I was in the... the the mindset of just something doesn't seem right with it. And I don't know. We also, again, asterisk, we do not know if this is an official thing. Yes. We yeah, just don't know. But, um, I mean, it was played in the engine in the game. Right. Like, it was. It, it's a literal Halo Infinite gameplay clip. So there has to be, like, so. UI showed it and everything. Like, the UI was customized for that. Yeah. The whole thing. Like when the enemy team ran out of lives, you saw a banner at the top that said enemy, no lives remaining or whatever. Yep. So. Is it round based then? That's what I'm wondering. Like we don't know necessarily know how long that match was. I think there was a timer at the bottom that was counting up and it was like at a minute 30 or something like that. Interesting. Yeah. I don't think it was counting down. I'm going to open it. While you give your thoughts, I'm going to open it just to confirm. I did want something round base, but this, I don't know. It is counting up. The clip starts at around the 50 second mark. Okay. How many lives does it show at the bottom for a team? Uh, when the clip started, red team had four in their pool. It looks like along with all four alive, I think. Yeah. And then blue has more than that because I, we still see the blue team's logo. Oh, so when you get down to less. Right. And I'm trying to make out is the clip is grainy as well. Well, you know what? If it, I just hit the mic. It's okay. Time we- tonight. Um, if it, if it works and it plays well, mm-hmm. I would just like to personally experience it. The The clip doesn't show enough of this mode for me. No. I did notice, like, the, the, the person's POV, they're only using a sidekick. Yes. They're only using a sidekick. And it's, are other players using sidekicks as well? This this doesn't seem like it would be um, standard. So I know that later on in the clip, when the, end, when the person's getting shot at, it's not by a 
Yeah. It's, it's not by a sidekick. So, so it's AR. I think he was using a Ravager. But yeah, that could have been a pickup. I'm wondering if this is like a custom. They they chose the mode, but did custom like, you know, only sidekick starts. I don't know. If it's in the game, we'll check it out when it's there. Let's, I mean, he we'll, switches to his AR. Yeah. So he still has an AR. We'll, we'll see what happens when uh, the game releases. We got, we got a week. Less we, than do, a week. we do. We have less than a week until oh. competitive settings are released. Um, what's up, Justin? Welcome back. The reason why I wanted to talk about this, though, is because this is brand new. This is something we had never seen before in more ways than one. We've never seen a round-based Besides breakout, besides breakout, um, but yeah, Halo traditionally doesn't do the 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 live based game modes, so this is just different to see. And that and that wall of death coming in, it was just that is definitely a battle royale type mechanic. Uh, something I would owe, like <sighs> wait, I think Halo had a mode like this. What are you thinking? There was a there was even a COD mode where like there was like a ball and you had to get it to the enemy's side, right? I mean, there was ricochet in Halo Four. Yeah, that was like that, right? It's like football. Yeah. What's up, Mark? Yeah. Welcome back, dude. Good to see you. You don't own my face. <laughs> and yes, I I still say that. Yeah, it's just weird. Not in a bad way. It's just it it we just never seen this before. And so when I saw it, I'm like. Part of me, this is why we I don't talk about leaks on the show because again, it's not 100% confirmed. But the fact that this was gameplay mm-hmm. really made me like, okay, I think we should talk about it. And it's when I saw the clip, I'm thinking to myself, why I feel like not a, too not enough people are talking about it. Because we've never seen this before. Yeah. And typically, especially in this community, when something new comes out, it's like, oh, my fucking God, you know? And I didn't see that with this. So I I don't know. I don't know. Uh, At this point, uh, yeah, I'm in the I don't know camp right right now. And I just want to, if it is, we'll probably hear about it. If it's a competitive game mode or maybe it's a social game mode. Very true. We don't know. We don't know. It is the, the next generation of breakout. Sure. Next thing you know, it's going to be completely unpopular, unpopular with the pros. They're going to disdain it. <laughs> it's going to go exclusively to social. Nobody's going to play it. They're going to come back. They're going to name it Attrition 2.0, and they're mm-hmm. going to give you shotgun starts. And it'll be its own competitive playlist. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, no. Oh my God! What a disaster! Breakout two point oh was. Holy shit! I feel shit. bad because it had I for me, it it barely missed the mark. Right? Like there. It oh yeah, Breakout in its original form was fucking rad. Maybe if they gave it its own custom maps, and n- not the digital. Well, for stuff. what it's worth, they were all custom. They were specifically yeah, designed for yes, that yes. game mode. But I didn't. I players should have had full blown, like. Shields and health. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. you do in typical competitive and social multiplayer. The fact that they tune that down, no. Give them base give them base stats, but give them the pistol start. Make it live based. Make it exactly like it was. Just give them traditional health. I also don't like the flag idea. No. No. But, flag idea. But stupid. there there should have been something to like a capture point in the center of the map. That's what it should have been. Sure. Or Speaking or, like the gulag in Warzone. It's not a bad idea. Or at least like you have to get the flag to the enemy side. Because you can get map control so easily and then just drag them the flag back, right? Sure. Like if you had to push to where the enemies are spawning, it's it's a little bit of a slower push, a more methodical. You have to yeah. get those slays. And maybe make the flag like make the flag heavy so it's a slower move. Could do that. You could have it where instead of like a um, instead of like a capture point where you just cap once it's captured, it's done. Maybe have it be like a hill type scenario where you or have where to you be within points. it for a certain amount of time. Yeah. That way it gives both teams an opportunity. I don't know. It just like, it could have, like you said, it was right there. Yeah. It was right there. And then fuck man. They, ah, Halo five was right there. 
Just kidding. They did a lot of good things. They no, did they a lot did. of they, they a lot of you, did a lot of advancements. Yeah. And some for the better, some for the worse. And you live and you learn and you move on. And but Breakout could have been so fucking cool. Um Breakout 2.0 is my favorite of the breakout modes. Mark, come on. Hey, if he enjoyed it, he enjoy it. No, nah, I'm gonna shut on Mark for a second. Oh god. I'm just kidding. No, you're right. You like what you like, and that's perfectly fine. Um I just couldn't believe. They didn't even change the health values, and they gave everybody shotguns. Like, that was weird. Guys, what? That was weird. And I remember some of the maps had saws on them with the same health pool. <laughs> You're dead. You're just, there's no point. It was like giving the someone someone the answer in the regular. Yes. Yeah. I love the answers so much. Talk about a fucking terrible, amazing gun. If it was, if you were using it, you felt unstoppable. If oh, it was being shit. used against you, you didn't, you didn't have You a felt like you had the answer. Yes. <laughs> oh, you have rockets? Well, I have an answer to that. Jesus, that gun was amazing. Um, all right. Infinite competitive gameplay at the end of the week. That's what we got there for the topic. Let's get into some regular news. Xbox and, hey, Adidas. Team up to celebrate 20 years of play. This is by James Monosmith, the senior sales and marketing manager of Xbox Consumer Products. Uh, Justin, before I even get to that, says, if they release the settings and it's AR start, I'll be very disappointed. I don't think they're going to do that, Justin. I don't think anybody thinks they're going to do that, but I agree with you. People are going to be very disappointed. Today, not today, but earlier uh xbox announced a global partnership with adidas to celebrate our shared heritage of play and unveil our first console inspired sneaker collaboration in honor of the 20th anniversary of xbox the collab features an exclusive new adidas originals by xbox sneaker the xbox 20th forum tech with translucent green details inspired by the special edition release of the original xbox console for the launch of halo combat evolved in 2001 marking the first ever generation of gaming at microsoft the Adidas Forum tech design balances nostalgia while embracing modern technology and is symbolic of how we look at our own Xbox history, celebrating the last 20 years and looking ahead to limitless future of gaming. This is... <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> My throat was just like... Uh. <laughs> Good Lord! I'm not even 30! Come on, man. Ah, what's up, fat boy? Welcome Slim. back. You, It's okay that you're late. You are still here, and that's all that matters. We love you. Welcome back, man. You went back to, like, your uh, your opening uh, DMX voice. <laughs> <laughs> Just for a second there. I can't wait until people listen to that and are like, that's enough HTS Pro Talk for today. We're going to just I mean, miss that one. I mean, the intro was enough. That's <laughs> <laughs> the synopsis of this episode. Um, this is just the beginning of our partnership with Adidas. And over the next few months, we'll continue to mark our 20th anniversary by launching additional sneakers inspired by past and present Xbox console generations, including the first ever sneaker available for purchase by our fans later this year. A 360 sneaker? I'm just thinking, like, that could be... It's literally a sphere. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, like, the 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 white, like, all, like, the white Adidas with the green highlights. It'd be cool. Like, It'd be really, really cool. And, like, the, the grayness in there, too, the different... Actually, what they should do, they should only do sneakers based off of Xbox console generations as the limited edition consoles. So, like... The, the first one that they showed off was, was the, based off the translucent cream for Halo cream, yep. Halo One, right? Yep. I mean, what you had like? There's a Gears of War 360 that looks fucking awesome. Yeah. There's a Gears of War Xbox One that looks fucking awesome. The Halo Xbox One. Yep. Uh, the gray and blue. And, yes. Oh. There's a there's an all gray with some black accent Halo Reach 360 that looks amazing. Um, you have the Halo Four translucent 360. Uh, hell, the Halo Infinite Series X. Yeah. Like, think about that as a shoe. Like, that cosmic pattern on there, they look fucking amazing. Oh, man. They, I I hope they have a lot of fun with this. Because the, the first pair that they showed look really cool. You have the fucking Star Wars 360? Oh, 
my God. R2-D2 shoes. <laughs> and a C-3PO controller. Look at that. Oh, my God. That'd be the dumbest thing in the world, but amazing Ooh. at the same time. See, like, just an iconic silver shoe, though, would, would work. Like, it'd just work. The Halo 3 360? That was on this? Yep, that was that one. Wow. Yep. Yep. Green with the fucking visor accents on it. Was there this purple light on it? No. That's just someone did That's that. That's just someone did that. Yep. God damn it. It was, was just it was just all silver. Yeah. With like like I said, like the black. Um they're still selling for like three hundred bucks on eBay. That's oh crazy. yeah. Well they're limited edition. But uh no, they they have obviously we imagine that they'll just focus on the core consoles, but like they have a lot, a lot in their back pocket that they could be doing. And I just really hope they do some wacky shit with this because that, that first, the first shoe in that article looks awesome. Just looks different and cool and modern and a shoe based off that too. Just look fucking cool. Yeah. The light blue accents on there too. Oh my God. Look amazing. Look fucking amazing. Xbox Cloud Gaming, Will. What about it? It's now fully powered by faster Xbox Series X hardware. This is by Tom Warren of The Verge, and I quote, Microsoft's Xbox Cloud Gaming Service, xCloud, is now fully powered by custom Xbox Series X hardware. Microsoft tells The Verge it recently completed the upgrade, which improves both frame rates and game load times for players streaming Xbox games over the web. While Microsoft has moved Xbox Cloud Gaming to 1080p and 60fps streams in recent months, the company has yet to unlock the full potential of custom custom Xbox Series X hardware to deliver 4K streams. It's not clear when this will be available, but Microsoft has been moving towards delivering uh, uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming beyond just mobile devices and browsers. Pre-orders are open for the Infinite and Razer gear. Spoiler alert. They were opened up GameStop a long time ago. So, I mean, now you can go to Razer's website and do it if you'd like. Uh, A, I believe they're overpriced. Um, B, you get in-game rewards for them. C, if I was to get one, it would have been the mouse pad, but it's 80 bucks and it comes with challenge swaps. (laughs) Fuck yeah, dude. Oh my God. You do have like every other mouse pad though. I do. And that's why, yeah. I, I am waiting. I'm not going to lie to you. I If the Halo Gear website releases an infinite mouse pad mm. like they have with every other one, yeah. I will get that one just to have that one. Sure. Makes sense. Um, but yeah. Go Medieval. Halo the Master Chief Collection Season 8 by Halo. It's a YouTube video. Go check that out because Season 8 for MCC officially arrives on October 13th, 2021. That is on Wednesday this week. Get your fucking... Weird and dope ass armor. I said it before and I'll say it again. I love how MCC are doing some wacky shit and the new armors look awesome. Like you can literally have a Spartan. Like a 300 movie Spartan. Yeah. In MCC. And that's awesome. And there's so much, so much more cool shit. But... There is a caveat to everything here. Remember Flood Firefight? Here's an update for you. MCC development and flooding updates by Postums. Latest and greatest. This week, we had some big news drop that Season 8, titled Mythic, is debuting in MCC next week. Well, this week, October 13th. Check out the full announcement. Click in the link that they include. In last week's update, we talked a little bit about the Halo 3 ODST Firefight update coming with Mythic and some changes to it from what players saw in the flight. Here are the key details below. We are super excited about all the content and changes that were available to players during the flight. These updates are making it to Firefight 2.0. Everything from the updates to granular customization to the additions of new waves and several improvements to matchmaking for ODST's Firefight, all these additions will be available once Season 8 rolls out in the not-too-distant future. However, we did want to note that both the Flood and Elite enemies present in the flight will not be part of Season 8's release. Don't worry, though. They'll be joining Firefight soon enough. One of the new enemy types, Sentinels, will be present and ready to fight. Keep an eye out for Elite and Flood enemies for Halo 3 ODST Firefight in the upcoming release beyond Season 8. 
We want to give a bit, big thanks to all of our Halo insiders for your feedback from our last flight. Your tickets and feedback are always appreciated. Hispanic Heritage Month. The, there are only a handful of days left to log in and get your Hispanic Heritage Month nameplate. Players who log in between now and October 15th will, be, will see it appear in your customization options menu. And then mid-mission checkpoints, theater files, and settings. Lastly, with Season 8 coming online next week, this week, this is a reminder to complete all campaign missions and capture all your videos. With each new game update, there is a risk that mid-mission campaign checkpoints, as well as theater clips, can be invalidated due to content rebuild around bug fixes the team has been working on. And this time around, there's a lot of bug fixes coming down the pipe. Sat in on a meeting with Halo support and the publishing team to review patch notes, and man, this is the most bug fixes players have seen in a while coming to MCC with quite a few for Halo 2. No customization options, but you know. Sorry, Dave. The last note of changes is that we, uh, we have found the flight inversion gamepad settings on PC and the multiplayer game timer on Xbox settings also revert to default with this update. So be sure to change them back after it goes live this week. That's it for the regular news. Come to the games, watch! Will. Yeah. The La Gorillas. <laughs> Yeah, the, the LA Gorillas have announced their roster for Vanguard. This includes Asim. He's no longer on the Sublinas. Gunless, Slasher, and Hook. Mm. Hook the Nuke. And then, for those who don't recall. That team used to be a bulk of the old EG team who won Worlds one year. Yes. Um, Apathy, who was part of that old roster, has actually rejoined the LA Gorillas as their very first content creator. So congratulations to Apathy. Next up, we have the roster announcement for the Florida Muneers. This includes, they said they're going to run it back. but There's a notable person missing. They're going to run it back this time with Skies, Havoc, Awakening, and Dave Patty. Neptune is not there. But that's okay because Neptune said the following. After finishing my rook first rookie season with the Mutineers, it was such a big learning experience for my career. I'll be departing from the team, and I'm very excited to announce what's next for me in the future for my COD career. Rumors are that he's going to the subliners. Interesting. That is that is where the rumors currently are. Hmm. Is that he will be a subliner. We'll have to wait and see. Finally, Splitgate announces Pro Series. Yeah. Yes. This is by Splitgate. Today, this was today, as a matter of fact. We unveil the future of Splitgate Esports with Play Beyond. Announcing the Splitgate Pro Series launch season. $100,000 plus in cash and prizes. Win Astro Gaming Gear. Weekly open tournaments with live broadcasts. Learn more and compete at SplitgateProSeries.com. Check that shit out. Splitgate's fucking awesome. It's pretty cool. And uh, I'm, I'm surprised. Like, it's cool that they're having a Pro Series with it. Um you know, the, the portals make it chaotic at times, but I, I mean, it's just another, that's their mechanic to it's their another skill gap. Yeah. It's kind of, it's, it's cool. It's fucking cool. A lot of people don't realize too. Like if you, so sometimes like you can't see through enemy or teammates portals, right? Correct. You can see through your own, mm -hmm. but if you hover your reticle over a portal and it turns red, just shoot and you'll, you'll hit someone. Like Makes it's kind of, it's kind of funny. Makes like you can just sit there at a portal or like off angle of a portal and just wait for it to turn red and just start, start, start blasting. It's like the skewer based yeah. off the video. If your reticle's red, just fight. Unless give, you're on give PC. A right. Unless you're on PC. Um, that's oh, it shit. for con of the games. Watch will has not entered the games. He's played. So oh, I'm going to put him on no, the no, spot. Go for it. It's time for Will's adventure. I can't fucking wave my arms. Oh, yes. I fuck. Wait, fuck this. It's time for Will's adventures with the Nailovers and other games too. <laughs> will, 
what'd you play last week? Uh, I played Apex. Apex Legends. That is a video game. That is a video game. That is a battle royale yeah. video game. And and uh three V three. Three V three competitive. I am uh, Trace by Trace. I'm Silver Three. Ooh, baby. Um I could most likely I'm I'm not like I if I solo queue, depending on my teammates, I might lose points. But if I'm solo queuing with another duo or if, if we have a full team of three, I haven't had a game where I lost points. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. So it's been good. That's awesome. Um, I could most likely make it to gold if I kept pushing. The push, season push. ends in uh, three weeks, I think. Two to three weeks. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly taking a step back from competitive. Just because, like, I'm not great at the game. I'm not great at most games. I'm okay. I'm average. I learn. I need to learn to be average and not like. I got to be okay with that. So I'm taking a step back from competitiveness right now. You know, I got to be ready for infinite. But uh, so while doing that, one of my Joe, I talk about him often on this. Um, he was like, "If I got you dead by daylight, would you play it?" And I'm like. Not solo, but if, if you're on, maybe. So he found a code for $7, got me dead by daylight, and we played a few rounds. Uh, I was two for two on escapes. And then the third game we played, we had a killer that was, like, top rated, and he just murdered the whole map pretty quickly. Jesus. And we're like, yeah, okay. And he, he hopped off for the night I hopped off. But dead by daylight, uh, I may have had a few drinks before playing it. And uh when you like, don't say. So so you're you're running around and you have to like fix generators and do all this stuff, right? So when you're or healing, you gotta heal other people too. Mm -hmm. Um so you're fixing a generator and a skill check pops up and it's just the line that goes in a circle. Yeah. And you have to hit it within the, the zone. Yep. If you hit it in the white zone, you get like a good skill check and it boosts the progress even farther. Well, I was drunk. I couldn't hit a skill check to save my life. Oh, God. So, like, ha! I'm alerting the, the killer. Like, every time I'm on a generator trying to fix it, alerting the killer. Um, I just kind of turned into bait after a while. I would just That's run, what it sounds like. I would just run around and do random things. And, like, Joe and the other teammates would fix stuff. And um, Joey would constantly come and pull me off the hook. <laughs> like, Oh, my God. Sorry. Awesome. But, uh, yeah, got out two for two until we faced that top-rated killer. But yeah, it was it was a good time. It was it was fun playing with someone else. I don't see myself playing it solo, mm -hmm. um, and maybe I should just to get a little better, get the mechanics down. Sure, and not maybe not worry about escaping, but try to get the mechanics down better. Yeah, because like there's for being chased, um, it it it's it's skill to be able to use the environment to loop pro properly because the the killer has like a um, obscured vision. So being able to, they call it looping, and it's just knowing when to, like, where to turn, um, where to go to get out of the killer's view, maybe have them chase you a little farther and then get out somewhere and heal, do whatever you need to do. Makes sense. And also just learning the nuances of the, each separate uh, killer has different abilities, right? Makes sense. Yep. Um, they have a lot and, of different killers in the they, game now, too. They do now. And I, Joey was, like, explaining them to me, and I'm like, how am I supposed to counter all this? You it's know? like Rainbow Six Siege all over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but it was it was a good time. I would play again. Cool. Another thing we need to do is uh, I would like to get like a group Phasmophobia night going. And that's four players. I think that would be really fun. Just to, it's it's spoop, spooky season. You know? Spoopy. Spoopy season. Yes. October. It we is. should, I should, I, I should, I want to coordinate like a Phasmophobia night, you know, go ghost hunting. There you have go. some Have some spooky things happen. Back for Blood is on... Xbox Game Pass on PC yeah. and console. There you go. You can um, do one of those. That like a, that's like Left 4 Dead, yep. right? Yeah. I don't know what that game's about. Uh, Four-player co-op shoot shoot zombies or shoot infected. Gotcha. Yeah, and uh, apparently Back for Blood has like a, a card-based system to where uh, they can introduce a lot of different modifiers and stuff, so it's not the same shit every yeah. single time. I do kind of want to get away from shooters, though. Like, I want to do sure. something that's not... Like, oh, I was just, I'm just saying, like, no. for spoopy season. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's another idea. Another zombies. And it, it it just came out, so it's, like, it's brand new. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, yeah, those, those are literally the only two... I only played games on Friday night. It's the only Same. time I played, which was weird for me. 
Uh, uh, I don't know what happened. It was yeah. weird. I only played games on Friday night too. I played one game. When, when is it out, Justin? Back um, for blood. Tomorrow. Yeah, I, I would. Tomorrow or Wednesday. It's got to be soon. I'm looking. Back for blood release date. October twelfth. Yep, tomorrow. tomorrow. Like I said, uh, Game Pass on both PC and console, if I'm not mistaken. So, perfect. Give it a download. Uh, what'd you play, Josh? I played MCC for the community playdate. Um, and there were two games that I wanted to call out here. The first of which, I had the best snipers game I've ever had in my entire life of playing Halo. It was Halo Two Anniversary. It was on, I mean, what do they call it, Shrine? Oh, Sanctuary? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I had 37 out of 50 kills for our team. Damn. And I had two running riots. Damn, son. Yeah. Um, it was un- unbelievable. I've never had a game like that before in my entire life. And I just, Beth and I were joking because Beth, uh, Beth's the sniper. And so I told her, I'm like, Beth, I'm expecting you to drop 30 kills this game. Right. Yeah. And, uh, she's like, okay. And we're just laughing about it. And then I was, I was feeling pretty good. I was getting up there, but like, I didn't think I was going to get anywhere near 37. So do they have infinite funny. ammo with the snipers? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the H2 sniper shoots so much quicker than anything else. Like you, you get it's, it's crazy fast how much you can shoot. And there's no, there's no uh, bloom. So yep, yep, yeah. And then the last one I want to talk about was a uh, a comeback win on Guardian. But it wasn't just a comeback win. We were down a player, so it was myself, Beth, and Justin, and our teammate quit pretty early on, I'd say. And there was a point in the game I think we were down like 15 kills, or something, and. I remember Justin, like we had some really good rotations and we're starting to bring things back. Um, and I, what Justin, it was around like the, the 40 kill mark or something like that. And we, we started getting away from each other and Justin's just like, guys, let's just stick together. And I thought, and I'm like, duh, smart idea. Let's just fucking stick together because they can't kill us when we're all together. Yeah, hold hands. Exactly. And that's exactly what happened. Um, it's exactly what happened. So we just stuck together. We clutched it out. It was 50 to 47 at the end of the game. And like I said, we were down a player and it was remarkable. That was one, again, one of the best games I've ever played, not just from a statistic standpoint, but just everything culminated to perfect teamwork. And we just got the win. It was great. It was a real fuck, really fucking fun time. Nice. Yeah. That's that's all I played that last week. Cool. What's some MCC? Let's get into some shout outs. <laughs> Already mentioned that before, but we'll say it again. Shout out to everyone who joined the community play date. Justin and Beth, thank you guys so much. It was a fun time. Um, and Justin, you said it earlier. Um, MCC might drag me back and you hate it. Yeah. I. We say we we talked about it on Friday. Like every time a new season comes out, it's like, oh yeah, I'll fucking go for that. But the armors in this one really feel fucking cool. Like they have a dragon type set that I want to get. And knowing me, it's gonna be like halfway or three quarters of the way through the fucking pass. Whatever. Um, shout out to everyone who followed and subbed during the live show. We have uh Tragy Tragy. With the follow? Apologize for mispronounce that. That's my bad, you know. Um, Happy belated birthday to Nap Times with a Z. Mr. SWAT Nation himself. Congratulations to High Tech Redneck on reaching 100 subscribers on YouTube and getting your custom URL. Very nice. Yes, very nice indeed. And then, because I have to fucking say it. Happy Canadian 
Oh, uh, Thanksgiving. Or as Justin would say, the real one. The real Thanksgiving. So, happy happy Canadian Thanksgiving ever all all of, all of our better all of our better neighbors up up north. Um, hope you guys had a good day. I have a dumb question. Okay. To Justin and all the other Canadians that listen or watch this show, um, do you guys eat the same food that we would? Oh yeah, I said Turkey Day. Okay, that makes sense. So is it like, yeah, turkey? Is it is what it other the Thanksgiving same stuff food, that we like eat? Mashed potatoes, stuffing, ham sometimes, ham, black olives, green bean casserole, pickles, cranberries. Yeah, did I say yams? People do yams. You you did now. Okay. Sweet potatoes Sweet with potato. the marshmallows on top. Pumpkin pie. Not a fan of those. Me either. But I mean, I like pumpkin pie. The sweet potatoes. Right. Right. They're a thing though. Yeah. It's, is it is it pumpkin pie or is it Cool Whip with pumpkin pie? <laughs> well, considering I don't like Cool Whip, it's oh, pumpkin pie Okay, for me. I was like, I'm smother, one of those people. I smother that thing. It's like I take my yeah. piece of pumpkin pie and then like I coat it so it's you, you can't just, see the pumpkin pie. No, you have like you have your cool your, whip uh, slice. You have your container or like yeah, you have a container of Cool Whip and then you take a spoonful of Cool Whip and then take like a nibble of the pie. Oh, well, this yeah. is good. Yeah, there you it's go. Good. There you Jesus go. Christ. Perfect. Um, Justin says, you know, it's just an invisible line that separates us, right? There isn't that much of a culture shock between the two of us. Well, hey. Oh, yeah, yeah, you never know. We're uncultured Americans over here. Yeah, you know, we, we know nothing. I said that you guys are <laughs> our better neighbors up north, Um, especially from me to you guys. It's like eight hours away. He did say that. It is eight hours away from where he literally is right now to where we literally are right now. Yeah. You know what's crazy to think? Like what? the comparison of size of like the, the US to like Europe, right? Yeah. Like each state is like its own country size. Which is just nuts. You know? It's nuck and futz. It's nuck and fuck. Uh there's a there's a content creator, he's from the UK and he was planning a trip over here. He's like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk California because he's like not thinking. Walk he, California. Walk through California. And then he finds out it's like, he's like, it's, it's a, days. It's a six hour drive. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, it's weeks. Days. Yeah. He's, he's like, oh, nope, not doing that. Hold on. Can I, can I just quickly hold on? Are you going to look it up? I'm genuinely curious now. Of what? What are you looking? The top to the bottom of California. Are you like going to pin it? Can I do that? I wish there was an easy way to do that. Right? There's got to be. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, you can do directions. That's my starting point. And then we're going to go, we'll just go, we'll go to San Diego. Perfect. So it's a 14-hour drive. Oh, 14-hour. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So 14-hour drive. But I want to walk. It's like a month. 299 hours. Damn. So if we do, if we just did straight walking, if we did 299 divided by 24, it'd well, be almost 12 and a half days. 12 and a half days. Half of straight a, walking. Almost, yeah, yeah. You can't stop. It's 12 right, and right, a half right. days of straight walking. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta stop for, for food, water, sleep. Oh my God. It just says, it, exactly. Like an hour drive for me is nothing. That's peanuts. But for something in Europe, that they're like four countries over. Yeah. Wow. And he's going to walk it. He, he was. No, going, he is. Okay. <laughs> I'll reach out to him. Be like, you're walking. Hey, that? you got to do it now. Yep. You got to do it. You can't gotta, back out now. Yeah. You already, you already committed. Jesus. I also found out like, oh shit. They also talked about something like a TV license in Europe, which made me just think of like cable for us. Right, but no, it's just like straight up. You How need a, it sucks. You need a TV license to watch like any TV in the UK, at least. That's weird. Yeah. Anyway, y'all are weird over there. Also, like they didn't 
Just get, they're more cultured than me. They didn't uh, like screens. Like they don't have screens on their windows. Like they just open up, like a, almost like a door. They just unlatch it and the window opens out. I mean, I wish I didn't have fucking screens on my windows because they're ripped. They get they, yeah. I mean, so bugs get in there. Right. Well, imagine if you didn't have. Maybe they don't have bug problems. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, we don't know. We don't live there. We're. No. I am sounding like the biggest fucking moron of all time. I swear to God. If that proves to you I've never been outside of this country, there you go. Yeah. You don't like, know what you don't know. I don't know what Canadians eat for Thanksgiving, which it is the same shit we do. And I don't know if Europe has a bug problem. As in, do they have insects outside? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Obviously, they have fucking insects outside, Josh. God damn it. Oh, that is weird though that they don't have screens. Also, their washing machine is in the kitchen. That's like the standard place for it. Oh, I was gonna say, is that like all of them though? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> we need to go to the, Europe the to find out. The content creator that I was watching, I can't remember the name of the dude, but he was like floored that we have like our own separate rooms for washing machines. You guys want to know how clumsy my daughter is? Do we want to know? Also, I should say, uh, my daughter does not have COVID. So, <laughs> good on that front. She said, also, I hope we don't need to take her to the ER. And I said, why? She goes, she whacked her head by her eye in the dresser, then smacked her forehead on her crib, all in the matter of minutes. Oh, man. My kid, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we should wrap this up and probably go check on that, huh? Nah. <laughs> Just kidding. Um. Uh, I think it's only Greenland that doesn't ha really have bugs and, and Antarctica, I guess. You yeah, know? I mean, you'd think they'd be everywhere. Bugs? Bugs, insects, they just. Yeah, wouldn't Antarctica have like their own species of insects? Nah, everything's frozen. No. Oh. You need that heat. <laughs> heat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Wow. All right. All right, moving on. Well, that's uh that's it for the shout outs. Time to get some community creations. Halo memes every day. Reddit.com forward slash r forward slash Halo memes. Clips of the week number one twenty six by High Tech Redneck Beth herself, who has reached over a hundred subs on YouTube. She has her custom URL. Go check it out. Check that video out. We have K Mattify, the man behind the effects. This is by Divine Mind. It's their podcast with K Mattify as a guest. Go check that interview out. To the yeah. Google Doc of the show. To the show. And finally, we have Halo Survival, Episode 4, the Halo audio drama, Halo Infinite's fan-made. It's uh, by Podcast Evolve featuring ya boy, Will, a.k.a. I am Mr. Bam. <laughs> yeah, please, please go check it out. And let, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm curious. I haven't really seen much feedback. And I'd like to know. I'd like to know. Go fucking listen to it. God damn it. Um, maybe people are listening on the podcast form. Oh, there you go. I've been looking like, uh, the YouTube videos. There you go. Yeah. Premiered today. Yep. Halo four. Halo four. It's not. No. Halo survival episode, episode four. four. I read halo and then four. I'm sorry. Uh, oh man. You like that game too? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fun. It's fun socially. Oh my God. Um, Justin says, damn, I'm three episodes behind. I'll catch up tomorrow at work. Love the first episode. There you go. There you go. I, I have more lines in the next ones. In the first episode, I think I only had two lines. Like, that was it? They're just introducing your character. Now, you, now you're, yeah. like, building up. You know? I have a lot of lines in episode two. Fuck yeah. Um, Will, that's all I got for the community creations this week. Therefore, would you mind oh, yeah. plugging the... As always, find us on your favorite podcast services. iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pocket Cast. There you go. Uh, join our Discord, please. Join the community discussions that go on there. We talk about everything and er anything and everything. Anything and everything. It's all there. We do. Um, link is provided in the Google Doc at the show notes of the show. Or if you can't find it, just reach out to one of us and we can get it to you. We can get it to you. Uh, check us out on social medias. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, 
If you want to watch VODs, they're uploaded to YouTube, along with uh, interview VODs. They're all there. Uh, we're live on Twitch, if you don't know by now. We are. That's the people we're talking to in chat. Yes. Uh, so twitch.tv slash HGS Pro Talk. Um, our schedule still says we go live on Sundays on the on the Twitch site. We need to change that to Mondays. Oh, shit. My bad. But yes, every Monday at approximately 7 p.m. Central. Check us out on Twitch. If you want to go, check out our website. Uh, I think everything is listed there that you might want to find HGS Pro Talk related. Just maybe. Just maybe. We have uh, some merch in the top right corner. There's a link to it. As always, stay paused. Stay tuned. Things maybe. 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 And then, and then don't forget about the fine folks at Podcast Evolved. Make sure to check out halopodcast.com. Your home for Halo. Ah! If you're interested in lore, check out their show, Podcast Evolved. If you're in- interested in missions, Mission Debrief. If you like the Halo books, they have Halo Book Club. Maybe you like the, the, the Mega Construct series. I do. They have Build with Blocks show. Go check it out. You should go check that And then out. they also have top Halo news stories in their Halo headline show. Be sure to check out the fine folks at Podcast of All Day. Halopodcast.com. Your home for Halo. There you go. And Josh, what do we got on the next episode? We finally discuss Halo Infinite Competitive Sakes. Oh, my God. Finally. Oh my god. Get some news. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, oh. I knew it. I knew it was coming. Well, I mean, it, it can't not come. Thanks. Ooh, that's Ooh. bad. Um, Man. Yeah. We'll wrap up the show, Josh. That's probably a good idea. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for episode 204. Wow. 204. 204. I want to thank you very much for listening. I want to thank you very much for watching. If you're tuning into the live show, hope you have a great, great night. Um, and, yeah, I don't have much else to say. I hear my kid crying upstairs. And by crying, I mean screaming. It's time for bed. My kid's an asshole. <laughs> um, but so am I. So, you know, like father, like daughter. Guys, we'll be back next week to finally, finally talk about competitive Halo Infinite settings. I can't wait. And uh, if you're hanging out, we're going to go host up Oath. Because, Will, you mentioned Phasmophobia earlier on. Yeah, yeah. She's playing that right now. Nice. So why don't we go host her up and uh, and that, that'll be that'll be fun. You guys can go watch go watch the spoopies. What's, what's... Are you are you doing the thing? What are you doing? I was just trying to find the URL. Okay. Sounds good. Is there like a is there like a host a host channel? Look at, oh my god, look at that! It's fucking crazy. All right, guys, we'll be back next week to talk about Halo Infinite competitive settings finally. But again, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back next time. Until then, go watch Oath. Go watch some Phasmophobia. We'll see you next time. Again, until then, bye bye. Thank you so much for the eight month resub!